Hello, welcome to the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. In today's video, we're going to look at the concept of mid-side processing. The reason why I'm saying concept is because this is not a definitive video on everything to do with mid-side. I'm going to go through the concepts of it because there's so much to it and there's so much that you can do with it. So we're going to go over some of the basic ideas and I'm going to show you a neat trick in the MPC. It's obviously a workaround because we don't have mid-side processing as such in the MPC. Let's jump in. Okay, so I've got a sample in the MPC. Before we go any further, just quickly for anybody that's interested, today I'm using a vintage Helios lens. It's a 28 millimeter lens. It's from the late, it's from the early 80s actually. But the interesting thing is that Helios lenses were Russian and very famous lenses in fact, great lenses, really nice vintage look. But the early 80s ones and the 28mm ones were actually manufactured in Japan. So there you go, really, really interesting. So anyway, let's move back into the MPC. We've got a sample here. I'm gonna play you the original version of it. That isn't the original version. Okay, so as you can see, that's a stereo sample, and that's the original sample straight off the record. I have actually speeded it up a little bit. So with mid-side processing, you can't actually do it as such in the MPC. There needs to be a little bit of a workaround. Now, as I said, this is not a definitive video on everything to do with mid-side processing. What I'm gonna show you is a little, it's a very old mixing and mastering trick, and it basically gives um, a signal a lot, a, a bigger, stereo field it gives it a lot of width it kind of blooms in the mix i guess would be the word that i would use and the concept behind it generally is that you would have most of the well all of the lows low mids mids high mids kind of front and center and then you would have the highs and some of the high mids panned like hard panned left and right and what that does is it gives the source, whether it be a full stereo file or just a vocal or whatever you happen to be doing this trick on, it just gives it a lot of width. So that's one of the uses for mid-side processing. You, you use EQ, you will EQ the mid, uh, the middle of the signal rather, um, with your low ends, your low mids, your high mids, etc. This isn't like a definitive rule. There are obviously exceptions, and I'm not saying this is exactly how you should do it, but this is one of the tricks which I'm going to um, explain now that you use mid-side for. But there's, a, there's millions more ways that you can use mid-side processing. So in this case, what I'm doing is I've taken the, the original stereo sample and... I have summed it so everything is, is, is a mono signal basically, front and center. I EQ the lows, the mids, and some of the high mids in the, in the center of the signal. And then I've copied the sample and I've used, well, I'll show you the process in a second, and basically hard panned it left and right. And that's given it a whole load of width. So first, what I'll do is I'm gonna play again the original sample. I'm then gonna play the some sample where everything is just in the center and it's basically a mono signal. And then I'm gonna play the version which we end up with once I've explained this process. So the original sample. Real, real MF Doom, rest in peace, real MF Doom vibe going on there. I don't think he used it. Uh, so yeah, anyway, sorry. So you can hear a bit of width there. It's obviously stereo. Uh, the strings are kind of panned a little bit. There's, uh, the guitar is slightly panned. So I'm hoping that you can hear that on YouTube. Now then what I did is I summed the signal. So now you can hear everything's in the center. It's kind of one dimensional, it still sounds good. 
Uh, that's how you know it's a good sample, I think. Um, and then finally, this is what happens when I apply the process which I'm about to explain to you. So you can hear there, the drums are front and center, the bass is front and center, but you know, the, the reverbs, the highs, the high mids, um, the kind of atmosphere, the air, everything of that is really, really wide and it gives the signal super width. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the process. So obviously we had the original sample. Let's just go to the original sample here. Here's the original sample. And all I really did is go into process. And if you go right, right to the end, it's not quite to the end, stems is at the end, but near the end. And if you choose some, now, like I said, you can experiment with this. You don't have to sum the left and right everything all together. You can just make the left signal mono or just a right signal mono. But in this case, what I wanted to do was using this to demonstrate this technique, I wanted to sum everything in the middle and then pan everything hard right and left. So I've just summed that into a mono sample, which you've got here. So now if we come out, we've got the mono signal on pad two. And I did a little bit of processing on that, just literally added a compressor. That was purely a subjective taste thing. I just wanted to kind of just give it a little bit of glue and just kind of a bit of cohesion. So as you can see, I'm not doing an awful lot here. Mix bus style compression, uh, two to one ratio, long attack, so I'm not crushing the transients, short release to just to give it a little bit of punch. Pretty standard mix bus uh, compressor set up there. Not really doing any gain reduction at all, just kind of shaving the peaks off just a little bit. Okay, so that's our mono signal. Now, if we go into the signal on the side, now you can hear that sounds a little bit thin and sort of a bit crap, basically. But what I've done there is I've taken the original sample, put it onto pad one, not the, not the sum sample, the original sample, put that onto pad one, and then I apply these effects. So I've gone into stereo width, I've gone 200% and a delay of eight milliseconds. And what that effectively is doing is a really strong Hass effect. Look up Hass effect, I have actually done a video on it, but it's a classic way of basically spreading things out of the stereo field without going into too much detail. So you're kind of delaying the left and right signal against each other and it gives you the impression that they, they're really, really wide. And with the stereo width, obviously, I've also gone 200%. I've really pushed the highs as well. Now, the, the purpose of this is I want everything that's low, low mid to be in the center. And it's a, it's a mixing and mastering trick that you use quite often with things like a pole tech or something like that. And you would um, hard pan the highs or the reverbs, etc. anything kind of like high up the air, and it would just give everything a massive amount of width. It is, I didn't invent this technique, it's age old, uh, and people still use it in mastering and mixing now. So that's really kind of what I'm showing you today, this kind of technique, and it's just one of the things that you can do with mid-side processing. We don't have an EQ or anything or any compressors or anything in the MPC which have mid and side processing, which is why you have to go through this technique. And basically I'm taking two signals that are the same, but I'm processing the width version and the, the middle version separately. So this is the width version. Like I said, it's absolutely panned far left and far right to give absolute width. But because I don't want it to interfere with anything in the middle, after stereo width, I've then gone into power EQ and I've gone into the high low cut and I've just cut everything below 200, 300 hertz, 277 to be exact. Uh, not a super sharp slope, 12 dB, but not a shallow one either, kind of in the middle. And that's just effectively taking everything off in the low end. So it's not clashing with the low end in the middle part of the signal. And then again, just a little bit of compression. Again, this was a bit of taste. You can see it's not really doing anything at all, but it's just kind of reeling it in, just giving it a bit of glue and cohesion. So with that, to explain, to summarize, 
basically I have the original sample super, super split absolutely apart. I mean, if you compare the width of the original sample to the copy that I've got in here, you should be able to tell on YouTube. Here's the original sample again. You can hear how wide that has become just from that sample. But then if you combine it, both of them together, so that you've got my monode signal and my super wide signal, instead of it just sounding okay in terms of width, So there you have it. As I said, this was kind of a basic introduction video to the concept of mid-side processing. And what I, what I really wanted it to do is kind of open your minds to the idea of the fact that with by applying the mid-side processing in the MPC by doing this, by splitting your signal, so you've got the super wide and you've got the one in the center, there's so many things that you can do with it. That trick that I just showed you there with the EQ where your EQ in the highs, you cut out all the lows on the side and front and center, you're EQing it kind of the way you would normally just EQ a signal. That's an age old technique, but it's a really, really handy technique to give a signal that is initially kind of a little, not boring, but just kind of one dimensional. You can suddenly give it all this width and all this bloom. It's a technique that you can apply on a master, but be really, really subtle with it. Don't push it too far because you don't want too much width. So it is possible to do mid-side processing in the MPC. It is a little bit of a workaround, but I want, but I really wanted it to open your mind to what you can do. Because the, the thing is, is if you apply the same concept you can start doing crazy things like just uh, adding reverb to the sides, um, super compressing the sides, um, adding some chorus to just the sides. Um, you can even do, I mean, if you really, really want to experiment, you can do crazy things like changing the pitch on the sides to an octave higher, an octave lower. Uh, you can do those kind of things with uh, vocals. Um, with drums, you can give uh, percussion a lot more width, like tambourines, hi-hats, congas, um, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it really is limitless. And what I wanted to do with this video, like I said, it's very basic what I've shown you, but what I wanted to do is just really, really open your mind to the, the fact that with a little bit of imagination, using these concepts, you can you know, the, the world is your oyster and you can do so much with it. So I hope that's inspiring. So thanks for watching. This is the Quakes Motel. My name's Conan. Till next time.